Hi everyone. Today in this video, we are going to discuss interaction between lithium and furosemide. Lithium and furosemide are the two drugs belonging to the different clinical category. Lithium is a mood stabilizer classified as anti manic agent, whereas furosemide is a diuretic. So both of these drugs are different. And lithium acts on the CNS, whereas furosemide acts on the kidney. So their site of action is also different. But still there an interaction exists between lithium and furosemide. Which type of interaction it is? Whether it is pharmacodynamic or pharmacokinetic interaction. When drugs are interacting at their mechanism of action or site of action, it is called pharmacodynamic interaction. And when they are interfering at any pharmacokinetic steps like absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion, it can be called as pharmacokinetic interaction. So today in this video, we are going to see how this lithium interacts with furosemide. Lithium is a mode stabilizer, but it is having one of the limitation. It is having the narrow therapeutic window. That means the gap between therapeutic level and toxic level is very narrow. On the other hand, furosemide is a diuretic, which produces high loss of sodium from the body. By using these two points, we can discuss the interaction between lithium and furosemide. Before going to discuss this interaction, let us see what is actually lithium. Lithium is the smallest ion that can be used as a drug. It is available as lithium carbonate as a standard dosage form. This drug can be used in the conditions like mania where hyper excitability can be reduced by lithium. And this drug can also be used in the conditions like hypomania which is somewhat similar condition with low severity. Again, in such people, lithium can control the aggressiveness and irritability. Another important use of lithium is in the treatment of bipolar disorder. This is a mental disorder where the mood swings from mania to depression and depression to the mania. In such conditions, lithium can be used to control the manic phase. So the mood swings can be controlled by use of lithium. With use of lithium carbonate, the aggressiveness in the people can be reduced and it can also reduce the induction of any self-harm in the people. That's why lithium is one of the important drug in the treatment of mania. And this drug is available as a tablet form as well as capsules. It is also available as a solution where lithium is present as lithium citrate. This drug can be given both in the adults as well as children with children age greater than or equal to 7 years, lithium carbonate can be given. And this anti manic agent is suggested to be taken at the bedtime. But the treatment requires very long period. Sometimes it may take several weeks to months in order to control the manic phase of the people. So lithium carbonate is used for chronic purpose in order to control the mania. That's why with use of lithium, we can observe few of the important side effects. This drug mainly produces dry mouth, diarrhea, fatigue and weakness can be observed. It can also produce some metallic taste in the mouth. Apart from these side effects, lithium can produce few of the central side effects like nausea, hand tremors, frequent urination. Lithium can produce polyuria. That means it can increase excretion of body fluids along with loss of so many types of minerals. With use of lithium, we can also observe some impairment of memory, particularly in the elders. So these are the side effects produced by lithium carbonate. As we have discussed earlier, lithium is having the narrow therapeutic window. The gap between the therapeutic range and toxic range is somewhat less. So any small increase in the lithium levels within the body may produce a significant toxic effect. That's why regular blood tests should be done in order to assess the lithium levels within the body. And during the treatment, any factor that influences the lithium levels within the body may increase the toxic reactions. Generally, the therapeutic range of lithium is variable from 0.8 to 1.2 milli equivalents per liter. On the other hand, the toxic concentration is greater than or equal to 1.5 milli equivalents per liter. We can see that very small gap is there. Upper limit of therapeutic range is 1.2 and the toxic concentration starts from 1.5. A small gap is there between the therapeutic range and toxic concentration. So a small raise in the lithium levels within the body may induce the toxicity of the lithium. That's why care should be taken to monitor the lithium levels. 
and lithium toxicity can produce various side effects. Initially, it can increase the nausea and vomiting. Whenever any drug is toxic, it induces the nausea and vomiting in order to expel the drug out of the body. With the initial stage of lithium toxicity, we can observe severe nausea and vomiting, muscle weakness, tremors, shakiness can be observed, ataxia, loss of balance can be observed with lithium toxicity, it can also produce some vertigo, spinning, dizziness and lightheadedness, agitation, confusion, blurred vision, all these symptoms can be produced with lithium toxicity. So while using lithium, care should be taken to monitor the lithium levels within the body and any increase in the lithium levels may produce toxic reactions. Now let us see the furosemide. Furosemide is one of the diuretic which is classified as loop diuretic because this drug is acting on ascending loop of Henle. This is one of the potent diuretic and it is also called as high ceiling diuretic. This drug can be used in the conditions like edema where accumulation of excessive body fluids can produce leg swelling, ankle swelling. So in case of peripheral edema or pulmonary edema, furosemide can be used which increase the excretion of accumulated body fluids. This drug can also be used in the conditions like severe hypertension along with other drugs, particularly in those people who are having hypertension associated with edema. So these are the two important clinical indications of this drug furosemide and furosemide is available as a tablet. The dose range is variable from 20 to 80 mg based on the patient conditions. Since edema also require a long term treatment, furosemide can also be given for several weeks. And this drug is going to acting on the kidney, particularly at the ascending loop of Henle, where one of the pump is existing that is sodium potassium 2 chloride exchange pump. This pump is going to be blocked by furosemide so that sodium as well as chloride ions cannot be absorbed into the systemic circulation. So this increases the excretion of various types of ions like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, proton, chloride ions, along with these ions, water is also excreted. So furosemide causes excretion of water and minerals. This reduces the body volume, thereby it can reduce the edema, as well as it can also reduce the blood pressure and cardiac work. So this is the action of furosemide. But because of long term treatment with furosemide, we can observe few of the important side effects. So this drug can produce hyponatremia, loss of sodium. This sodium along with water, it can produce some dehydration. So patients may observe dry mouth, increased thirst, dizziness, nausea, tiredness can be observed. Even it can produce some muscle cramps and palpitations. All these side effects are because of dehydration and due to loss of minerals. So that's about the furosemide. Now if we see the common point between the lithium and furosemide, both of these drugs are going to produce the dry mouth as important side effect. Both of these drugs can produce dehydration where furosemide is having more pronounced dehydration. And both of these drugs can produce nausea as one of the important side effect. Even they can produce some tiredness and frequent urination. Lithium can produce polyuria whereas furosemide produce excessive urination. So these are the common points between the lithium and furosemide. So when these drugs are combined, we can observe excessive dehydration in the people. But dehydration is not the significant interaction between lithium and furosemide. Instead, they can interact in another way. Furosemide mainly causes the loss of sodium. This sodium is having somewhat similarity with the lithium. Both are monovalent cations. So when sodium is more lost from the body, lithium is more retained, leading to lithium toxicity. So here we can clearly observe, this is the ascending loop of Henle and this is the filtrate. And this is outside the lumen where minerals can be absorbed into the systemic circulation. Now within the filtrate, sodium is present as well as lithium is present. The sodium absorption can be controlled by furosemide, which targets one of the pumps, sodium potassium 2 chloride exchange pump. Now when this furosemide blocks this sodium potassium 2 chloride exchange pump, sodium cannot be reabsorbed. Instead, it is going to be retained within the lumen. And since sodium is not reabsorbed, it is transported and excreted within the urine. In this way, furosemide causes excretion of sodium, but this sodium is highly essential. Therefore, body can retain the lithium. Because sodium and lithium are monovalent cations, now lithium is more reabsorbed into the systemic circulation with less renal clearance. 
So this increases the lithium levels within the body, which increases the lithium toxicity. Now with use of furosemide and lithium, simultaneously we can observe lithium toxicity, leading to various symptoms like nausea and vomiting, blurred vision, tremors, dizziness and muscle weakness. It can lead to severe symptoms like agitation, confusion and severe dehydration. That's why lithium should be carefully used with furosemide. And when the lithium is particularly used, low salt intake should be avoided because decreased sodium levels can increase the activity of lithium. And if it is required, the dose of lithium should be adjusted in presence of furosemide in order to eliminate lithium toxicity. Frequent blood tests should be done in order to check lithium levels within the body when lithium is combined with diuretics like furosemide. In this way, lithium shows a pharmacokinetic interaction with furosemide and it should be carefully used with this drug. So that's all about the interaction between lithium and furosemide. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.